No more Gypsy Heart. And well, right now, I'm about to start, well, I have kind of started, ironing the fabrics for my blocks. Let me show you what we have going on here. So, because I want it to be unique and different, this is the printed fabric for mine. And then the bands on the other side will be purple, green, and gold. So, my job right this minute is to iron all of these and then decide how I'm going to build this. So, okay, it's been about a week. You know, life gets in the way. But this is the Mardi Gras quilt thus far. Um, I'm going to have three rows of three. And they're going to include sashing in the center. But these are going to be quilts as I go. I'm just not quilting as I go quite yet. Um, but each course, I have turned the purple, green, and gold just out of sync just a little bit. So it gives a little bit of variety to the quilt itself. But this will be our center square. Okay. This is a log cabin quilt block. This will be the center square because home is where the heart is. And then all the others have the Mardi Gras fabric as their center square. When I get ready to quilt these, I'll show you how I do that. I think I'm going to use a black and lighter black damask print for the back of it to, so that it's not so loud on the back. But uh, I still have to make, I'm working on my last one in this succession. And then I have to put the next round will be the yellow and the point, the first point. So, I'll be back when I have all of my squares ready to be quilted. Yet again, another day, and I really can't tell if y'all can see me or not. I'll just turn y'all just a little bit. I'm filming on my iPhone until I can order my camera at the end of the month, beginning of the month, so that I can leave my camera set up on the tripod. But, for right now, you get an iPhone footage. Anyway, so all nine of my blocks are made. I'm going to show you how I, as a visually impaired person, cuts my fabric. That way, I, I know that it's cut the way I want. And if I screw it up, I can't yell at anybody else. Right? Right. So, what I do, my blocks need to be 10 inches by 10 inches. So, I line the block up at the corner right here. And then I look and see what I need to do. All right, so it says it's just a little shy of 10, and that's going to be okay because there's going to be black sashing between, so it'll make up for, there'll be black sashing between each of the blocks, so if they're a little short, it's not going to really matter, but I do like to make sure that my edges are all straight, and then this one doesn't need to be cut. Okay, now that my block doesn't need to be cut for the 10 inch on this side, I will rotate the block, set it up on its edge, and this is just a little shy of 10 inches. Uh, it's a little more than 10 inches. It's like 10 and a quarter, so, and I don't figure in a quarter inch on my blocks when I cut them just because I'm not that talented in math. So. Let's get this on the table. And this is what I have to do. I have to line up the ruler on the bottom. And I have to make sure that it is straight up here on the top. And then in order for me to cut, I use a rotary cutter, obviously. So now that it's all lined up, I usually start like in the center. And I know you're not supposed to. And I drag my blade along its edge. And then I cut it all the way. Get that one out of the way and I just take it away and I drop my trimmings in the scrap bucket by my feet and then so that I know that I have already cut this block I will write on it its dimension 10 by 10 I use a water soluble friction marker I don't like the friction pen I'll show you the friction pen in a minute
but I mark them so that I don't mix up who has been cut and who hasn't. So let's do the next one. I have a 12 by 12 cut piece of... Okay, so we're going to start. I'm going to line up, not that edge because it's not straight, because I nipped it by accident. Okay, that's lined up. And this block is actually 11 and a half wide. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut back to 10 and a half and then flip the block around and cut the other side to try to make it symmetrical in appearance. So again, I lay okay, my... Okay, now that they're all cut... Can you see me? There we go. Now that we can... I've got them all cut to the right length. I've already sewed on one piece of sashing. I'm going to sew, sew on the other piece of sashing. But to make sure I have them laid the correct way, I open it to make sure. So yes, that is laid the correct way. So I'll go in with a quarter inch seam allowance along this black piece of sashing. And that's how I'll string them across, going this way. When I do them, the outer ones will be connected all at once. So, all right, so now we go and we I cut. have set the sash between each of the blocks. And now I'm tying in the bottom row with the next row. So what I do is I pin my sashing right sides together and I'll take this to the machine and I'll stitch along here. I will press my seam and set it and then open it. And then I'll come in and join the last bit uh, and that will finish the top for today. So once all the pieces are together, today I will show it to you. Right now, I'm gonna take my layer, my, my quilt top, away from my quilt bottom. And this is the pattern on the bottom, the back side of the quilt. And I'm gonna add batting. And then I'm gonna pin this down to the batting. And I'm gonna do stitch in a ditch down the black sashing and probably in the middle of each of the squares. So, let's see how this comes out. Okay, so I don't know what you guys can see and what you can't see. My backing is print side down because I'm not flipping this blanket inside out. And then my batting is cut an inch at the top wider than my, an inch and a half wider than my piece of backing. So next we take we take this and turn it right sides together and then we're going to put that uh, right there and you want to make sure that all your layers are smooth no wrinkles no lumps <clears throat> and I'll show you what bat batting I'm using in a minute So, my sister's working on her project. Uh, we call this the, the uh, Emerald Gypsy Heart Sew Shop. <laughs> so, okay, it's all smoothed out. Now I'm gonna go get my safety pins and I'm gonna pin it. I'll be right back. All right, 10 minutes later. <laughs> okay, so I am going to safety pin the batting, the backing, and the quilt top to it. I'm going to safety pin them together, starting in the center as best I can because my table is kind of cluttered at the moment. So we're going to reach underneath the fabric. Okay, that one won't work. Mm -hmm. Oh, I couldn't get it in. Mm -hmm. Okay, now that my center is pinned, I can go in and pin all of the centers of the rest of the blocks, making sure that they there's flat as can be. You don't want any lumps, bumps, or you know things like that. So 
So when I'm done panning, I'll be right back. What she's doing now is she's trimming away the excess batting and other materials so that I can quilt it. I have to roll it up because the throat of my machine is not very wide. Okay, so now that it's been sized down a little bit, in order to get it through the throat of my machine, I have to roll it up and work one row at a time. And give me a minute and I'll show you how to do that. Okay, what I've done is I've taken the quilt and this is the back of it and everything is pinned in place. So I just roll it up and shove it through the throat of my machine and begin to quilt. So as soon as I get that set up in my machine, I will have my uh, camera person set up the tripod for me. Okay, now that we've got it kind of in the machine. So we hey. take this and we move it across the project as best we can and pray that the needle doesn't come unthreaded. Because my, my assistant, my lovely assistant, will have to rethread my machine. <laughs> because, again, I can't see to do it. So basically what I'm doing is I'm just rolling up the, the quilt. And I'm headed for the center square over here. Sorry. Mm, no worries. I wouldn't say anything. Yeah, my sister's machine has a bigger throat on it. Your, this is no. called your throat, the yeah. opening. All right, I'm almost there. <laughs> okay. Almost to that point. Let me line this up as best as I can. And then we're going to go like a this. I'm taking, I'm in the heart of the quilt. And I'm using a walking foot. It's about the only foot I use, mm -hmm. just because it's easier for me. Okay, so now I'm in the center, dead smack dab in the center of the quilt, and I'm gonna work through the heart of the quilt, and then I'll get back to you. I'm gonna take out my safety pin, if I can. <laughs> my mm -hmm. presser foot's in the way, hang on. All right. All right, now, so that's taken out. I'm gonna continue to go down the line right here. And then, magic, I gotta turn the quilt. <laughs> so, pick up our needle, pick up our foot, put the needle back down. <laughs> I could have paid for somebody to quilt this. I really could have. But I decided that I wanted to quilt it. Yeah, we had some technical difficulties. Um, so I'm going to finish this one and probably put it away for the night. Because uh, I'm already frustrated with it. And pick it up the next time I come upstairs. Now, it might take me, this has taken me, what, two weeks? Yep. Yeah, about two weeks to put this together. And if my health would be better, it wouldn't take that long. But, unfortunately, it is what it is. Okay. After some fiddle dinging and getting frustrated at the center square, it's finally complete. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go around the sashing with a zigzag stitch with yellow thread on the top and black on my bottom so I'll get back to you when that's done okay now that we've got our center square quilted I'm gonna show you guys that and not stick myself because there are uh, straight pins in it so what I did in the center square is I used glow in the dark thread and just this square and this is the only square that's quilted in each level the rest of them are just quilted around the block to help secure the blocks down and for those of you that are wondering it's about four foot ish wide square and this is the material in the back This is 
the material for the back. So, next step is binding. And that shouldn't take very long. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take what's left of my strip sets of my material, and I'm going to make the border out of it. One will be Mardi Gras, one will be purple, one will be green, one will be gold. So, tune in for the next segment. <laughs>